Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about solid state analysis. We continue with the design examples. This is our design example number one about RLC circuit design. We have the following circuit given with two resistors and one inductor and one voltage V in and we have an output voltage V out. So the following situation is given. Design the circuit to produce the output voltage V out is cosine 100T plus 10 degrees in volts. Then provided with the input voltage V in, 8 cosine 100T in volts. So as you can see, because we are dealing with steady state analysis, the frequencies must be exact the same, 100 radians per second and 100 radians per second. And we have a phase shift between the input and output voltage, and we have also difference in the amplitudes. And we will use these data, of course, to calculate the required values for the R1, R2 and the inductor L. So how do we start? We start first, as we did also in the previous uh, examples, uh, setting up the transfer function. So let's first start with that in Laplace domain. So we have the transfer function, which will give us a lot of information about this circuit. So the transfer function, the transfer function is actually the ratio between output voltages and input voltage, of course, in the frequency domain or what loss domain so it will be have the h of s just a name v out divided by v in this is just a ratio so if i want the ratio and not the specific values of the v in and v out i can also use the voltage divided rule as we, did, as we know from the circuit analysis video so what we have is actually the following you have this impedance which is seen between the terminals of the v out parallel combination of R2 and the inductor, divided by the total actually impedance seen by the voltage source V in, which is actually R1 in series with this impedance. So if I now call this impedance, just give a name, so the parallel combination I will designate it as Z1, so this is just Z1. Then I can say, using the voltage divider rule, I can say Z1 divided by the sum of the impedances will be R1 plus Z1, just this. So what is Z1? Now Z1 is the parallel combination of R2 and the reactance of the inductor, which is just S times L in the Laplace domain, which can be written, written as S times R2 L divided by R2 plus SL. Now, if I now substitute this in the expression here and also here, I will have the following situation. I will have SR2L divided by R2 plus SL divided by R1 plus SR2L divided by R2 plus SL. Okay. Now, of course, I have to simplify this because it is not really uh, easy to read what is actually happening here. So I will multiply the denominator and the numerator by the vector factor R2 plus SL. That will simplify the situation a lot. So that will result in S times R2 L divided by R1 times the R2 plus SL plus I have the last term S times R2 L. Okay, I can now go further with the simplification by taking the real parts together and the terms uh, with the parameter s together, so that will also be handy. So that will be, again, continue with the h of s, it will be for, the, for this part still the same. For the next part will be r1 times r2, just factoring out, plus then you have r1 times sl, and you have r2 times L times SL. So you have actually summation of the resistors R1 and R2 times the inductor value times S. You can go even further. You can say the following. If I now divide this term and these two terms by R1 plus R2, that will also simplify the situation a lot. And you will factor out that part outside the fraction. It will be R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times SL divided by, if I a little bit make some room here, 
divided by R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus SL. Okay, that's actually the expression now. What we have here is the expression Laplace uh, using Lewis and Laplace transform for the transfer function of the, the circuit. So if I now use, because it's steady state, I use S is equal to J omega. This is actually what I will use. So my H of H of G omega, J omega will be R2 divided by R1 plus R2, that's just a factor, times J omega L divided by R1 plus R2 divided by R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus J omega L. That's actually the situation now. Okay, so from this, I can now determine the expression for the gain and also for the phase. You might ask, why do I need that? Now, in the, in the data given here, we have the phase difference between the input and output portion and also the amplitude differences. So, that means actually there is a ratio between the amplitude of the output voltage and the input voltage. So, I can say the following. I can say at omega, specifically at 100 radians per second, I have a gain, which is 1 over 8, is 1 volt out, 8 volts in, and I have a phase of 10 degrees out, minus 0 degrees in, that will be, of course, plus 10 degrees. And this will be used, of course, at this specific frequency in the formulas we have we can determine from this expression for phase and the, the gain. So if I now say what is now the gain, what is now the gain formula, and what is the phase formula? Two expressions that will be handy for further calculations. For the gain, I have the following. So H J omega absolute value will be R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times omega L and then the square root of the part, real part, squared, so R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 quantity squared plus omega L squared. And for phase phi omega, that will be the phase contribution of this part minus the phase contribution of that part. This part is purely imaginary, that will be in plus 90 degrees. And for this part, I use again arc tangent using the imaginary part divided by the real part, as we did in the other video. So it will be 90 degrees, 90 degrees minus arc tangent and the real part. I mean, first imaginary part divided by the real part will be R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay. So that's actually the expression. Now I will have to evaluate these two expressions for these formulas at 100 radians per second. And I equate this one first one to 1 over 8 and this one to 10 degrees. But what do I do? What do I see in these expressions already? I have actually two expressions, two uh, equations, and I have three unknowns. So I have to select one. So you already know. You cannot, make, you cannot have a unique, unique set of your uh, component values. So you have to s s uh, search for or select one of the component values. So you can select R1 or R2 or L, it doesn't matter, but you have to select one of them. So if I do that also and then substitute omega is 100 here, and then of course equate this to 1 over 8 and this to 10 degrees, I have the following situation. So I will select for our calculation. I will select the inductor, so select L is 100 mini Henry's will be 0 0.1 Henry's will be exactly the same. So what do I have for the phase and for the gain? So for the gain, I will have still R2 divided by R1 plus R2, that's still in place, times the omega is now 100. And I have now the inductor, which is 0 0.1, divided by the expression now 
will become R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 quadrant squared and this will be 100 times 0 0.1 and whole squared and this must be 1 over 8 it's actually the expression for the gain now if I now move on for the phase it will be the phase phase will be as 90 degrees minus arc tangent of 100 times 0 0.1 divided by R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and this will be in between the parentheses and this must be equal to 10 degrees so I have now two equations and two unknowns so this is actually a, a unique set so I can determine R1 and R2 independently I will continue with the phase equation it's actually a little bit easier so I will have the following I will just rewrite I will subtract 90 degrees from the left side of the equation and right side of the equation I will have minus 80 here and minus arc tangent of this expression and I will then multiply also with minus 1 so I will get rid of the minus signs and I can do tangent of the left and the right side of the equation so I will have a couple of steps at once so I have the following I will have 100 times 0 0.1 this one will be of course 10 so I will have 10 divided by R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 this one will be tangent of 80 degrees again you do minus 90 degrees from the from left side and right side you will have minus 80 degrees and this minus sign and this minus sign of this part either each other up and you will have plus 90 degrees and you will lose the arc tangent by taking the tangent of the right side so you have to this expression and you're actually almost uh, close to this expression for the parallel combination actually of these two resistors so what you will have is the following you will have R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 will be 10 divided by tangent of 80 degrees and this will result in so if I now make this again, this will result in, if you just calculate this out, that will result in 1.76. Just round it off. So this is actually the expression what we have here. I can now uh, use that as expression number, for, number, uh, for example, I will denote it also as expression number one expression number two and I will designate it as expression number three so you can keep track of the equations so that's actually what we have now I will now use this expression equation number three in here in equation number one because then I have actually this as 1.76 this will be just a factor so just a number and that will be r2 divided by r1 plus r2 which will be equal to 1 over 8 so I will do that next so that will be actually the following substitute equation number three what we have now in equation number one what do I have I have the following r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times 10 which is again 100 times 0 0.1 divided by the square root of 1.76 which is that uh, expression for this resistors we have here plus again 10 squared because 100 times 0 0.1 must be equal to 1 over 8 now this is just a very simple calculation which is 1 over 8 divided by this term is r2 divided by r1 plus r2 this will give us the following so r2 divided by r1 plus r2 Will result in 0 0.127 and I will also give it this number 4 so equation number 4 okay now look at equation number 4 and equation number 3 what do you recognize this one is very close to that one but it has only one extra term which is R1 so if I now rewrite this a little bit uh, in a different form if I now write it like this 
So I now make it R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is exactly the same, is also equal to 1.76. This term that I have now in red, I will make it clear. This term is this. Okay, that's bingo, because I have now the situation almost ready, so it will be R1 times 0 0.127, which is 1.76, because this is just 0 0.127, which is what is in the equation number 4, and this is completely, this expression will be 1.76, and this will be also this one. So if I look at this equation, or this expression, just is R1 as an unknown, so this will be a very simple situation, so it will be R1 is equal to 1.76, divided by 0 0.127. If you do the math here, you will get very close to 13.9. Oh, so it's actually the value of R1. Now, I'm now actually very close also to R2. I have to use this expression, so this equation, to determine the R2, because I already know the R1. So then, what do I have? I know R2 divided by R1 plus R2 must be equal to, according to equation number 4, 0 0.127. This will be also R1 plus R2 is equal to, you do R2 divided by 0 0.127, which will give you 7.87 times R2. And if you now simplify this, it will be R1 is equal to 6.87 times R2, and if you now express this as R2 in terms of R1, will be R2 is equal to R1 divided by 6.87. Now, I have the value of R1, so if I now substitute that here, it will be 13.9 divided by 6.87, which will give us very close to 2.02 ohms. So I have actually all of the resistors and an inductor value, I have chosen the inductor value. From that, I have determined the resistor value R1 and R2 using the phase expressions and the expression for the phase and expression for the gain. So that's actually for this design. As you can see, it is actually, again, pretty straightforward analysis. Of course, you need this uh, transfer function at, at the beginning. And you, from that, you determine your gain and your phase. That's actually a very important step. So keep in mind that you first determine your transfer function from there, you use the S is equal to J omega, and from there you set up your equation for your gain and a phase, and then it is just following the step towards your unknowns. Unless you have, of course, a unique set, you can also uh, find the value of L uniquely, but this time we have two uh, equations and three unknowns, so we have to use one of the, uh, select one of the uh, component values so actually for this example i hope this will be clear and also uh, very handy for your analysis also this is just if you look at it from different perspective this is actually a filter circuit eh? because you have actually uh, if this uh, inductor is for example working at a very high frequency the circuit this will be of course an open circuit and if this is at very uh, low frequency for example at dc that will be a short so this is actually, uh, in a sense, a high-pass filter. So if this is uh, 1 gigahertz, for example, then in effect it will be R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That will be, that, that will be the gain. And for a very low frequency, that will be actually zero. So we will have minus, uh, minus infinity dB gain or zero gain. All right. So see you next time. And uh, don't forget to share and like. And take care.